Jared here from soundguitarlessons.com. This lesson is a songwriting lesson, or you can think of it as a chord analysis lesson, depending on which one of those things you're interested in, or maybe both. Uh, we're gonna be in the world of those topics right here, something very interesting, very fun. I'm in the middle of a songwriting project right now that I've been wanting to do for a long time, so I'm kind of going for it. And the songs I'm writing and working on are turning into a little bit of or a lot of it of finger picking, finger style, on a guitar, singing, kind of trying to flesh out the arrangements this way. When I tend to work on songwriting with the finger style um, on guitars, and a, a lot of songs do this, we can use open strings as these kind of droning notes that exist throughout chord progressions, like a single open string that is coloring an entire chord progression or some segment of a chord progression. This is happening all the time. Most straightforward example maybe is just think of Blackbird where there's an open G ringing throughout these just happening the whole time, right? Simple example, but lots of opportunities for that with all the strings that we have and what we might be uh, writing and chord progressions that we're writing. So we can have very simple chord progressions and think of them as normal chords, but these extra open strings can add a lot of texture, color, and harmonic interest, and make the chords, the chord names can sound very advanced, but it's really just us throwing an open string on it. So for fun, we're gonna take a song that I've been working on and I've been uh, in the studio the last couple of weeks recording some stuff, and this was one of the songs uh, that I was recording. look at the chords that I'm writing and the progressions that are coming up with a couple open strings on them and just analyze for fun what does this what would this chord actually be called with these extra notes in there and it should be um, I think a fruitful exploration if you're interested in theory uh, chord analysis or just songwriting inspiration or finger picking so that's it let's dive into each section here we'll go into the verse progression super simple just a two chord progression I'll switch views here and we'll do it <laughs> the melody over it. Of course, there's lyrics on it and everything too, but that's a little bit of kind of the melody that I'm singing there with this little kind of vibe groove between these two chords, um, finger picking. And what I'm thinking of it as originally is just like a D major chord, very kind of basic chord shape that I like to use a lot, these movable kind of open triads, one, five, and three of D major, one, five, three of D major. And then I'm just moving down, I'm thinking of this as like a one to six chord. This is B minor in the key of D major, one, five, and flat three. So these voicings you'll see me use a lot in my lessons. So without the open strings, it just sounds like just these chords by themselves. Common progression, like the hallelujah. Hallelujah is that same progression. Um, and so I'm thinking of that, but then I'm adding in the open, open G, and then also open E. Okay, so let's look at this. So, and I'm using a finger picking pattern that is called the pinch pattern. I have a video on the top for uh, finger picking patterns and that's one of them. You can check that out if you're interested in, in learning about that. Okay, so with the open G right away, we get kind of a, what, what is thought of as kind of an off limits chord, like don't play this chord. This note is an avoid note is what you'll hear uh, people say. This G is the fourth note from the root of this chord. So we have one, five, three, and four. Okay, so it has almost like a suspended sound to it. If we didn't have this on it, it would be a suspended chord. It would be this. And it makes it want us to go like one, four, five, and this resolution sound. So a sus four chord, but the third is in there too. And it's kind of works because the third and the sus uh, four, it's not sus four, but the third and the fourth, they're not right next to each other. The third is up an octave. So I'm considering that in the sound, but it just, to my ear, it just gets this floaty kind of emotional sound to it. To analyze it, we'd, if it's still a D chord, then that makes it an add 11 chord. Okay, so this is D major add 11. D major add 11. Even though this is four, there's some theory rules going on here where if the third of a chord is present 
and you add the four, then the four is called 11. If the third of the chord is not present and you add the four, then it's four replacing the three. You don't have to re remember that, but I'm sharing, you know, in the context along the way here, I have a video all about add chords and when to call them add chords versus extensions. And I'll put a link to that video in the description. Okay, so now we have D major add 11. Kind of nice guitar emo sound there. And then, this open E. Oh, that's so lovely. I like adding the open E to a D chord anytime. Much more rare that one would add the open G. And I haven't done that on really much else that I've played, but just in this song context, it was what I did. The open E is the nine of D. Okay, so now we kind of have to call this chord D major add nine, because of the E, D major add nine, add 11. Mouthful, right? And so I'd say D major, parentheses, add nine, comma, add 11, to be as specific as possible for what this chord is. And if you just think of it as D, and it happens to have open strings, great, that's fine. That's the typical way to think of it. Let's move to this chord. It's gonna be a very similar process, except the open strings are gonna change the actual chord name. So without open strings, we have just a one, five, flat three of B minor. When we add the G, actually let's add the, yeah, when we add the G, let's, I was gonna say we'll add the E first, but it doesn't matter either way. When we add the G, okay, what is the G to the root of the chord? It's a flat six. Okay, so do we say that it's B minor add, not flat six, but maybe flat 13 as an extension? And if you don't know about extensions or anything, don't worry, we're just having fun walking through a chord progression here. But here's what it does. If you have, if you're doing chord analysis and you have, uh, you find a concrete one, three, five or a one, three, five, seven, it kind of takes over what the analysis of the chord it probably is versus uh, calling it something with a bunch of extensions. So what we get here, and, and there can be multiple right answers for calling a chord shape many things. This absolutely could be B minor, add flat 13 or add flat six. And this open E would be the four or 11 because the third is in the chord as we talked about. So it's add 11 and add flat 13 or add flat six. But if we look at it and we include the G as a chord tone, we actually have all the notes of G major seven. G is in it, B is in it, that's right here. And D is in it, one, three, five, one, three, five. And then the seven is in it. So in a different order, we have this chord. G major seven, straight up. Here's the one, here's the three, here's the five, here's the seven. So interesting, it's a B minor chord shape, but with the open G in it, it's a first inversion G major seven. Okay, so you could think, kind of see, visualize the root here if you want, even though we're not playing that. That's G and then here's the three of it, and then that's the seven of it. Uh, that's a shell voicing of G major seven, which is a common way to play that. So kind of this eerie sounding version of G major seven. G major seven over B, which means first inversion, G major seven. So you'd say G major seven slash B, but we have the E. What is the E to G, okay? What is the E to G? You could look at it in many ways, but I'm thinking of this as the fifth of G. Five, one, five, six, so it's six. Do we call it six or do we call it 13? In this case, because there's a seven in the chord, we call this 13, okay? So this is G major 13 over B. G major 13 slash B is how you would write that. G major 13 over B. And that's just us being analytical about it. It's fine that I'm still kind of conceiving of this and it almost really is sounding like the one, six chord, one chord, six chord with a bunch of color floatiness, one chord with a bunch of color floatiness, six chord. So there's not a right or wrong here. It's just theory is theory. It's, it's when theory becomes actual music theory is when there are multiple right answers or multiple interpretations or someone saying, I kind of am thinking of it this way or someone else saying, I'm kind of hearing it this way. Um, so we're just being really specific. If you add up all these notes together, that's what the chord would be. You might still be feeling it and hearing it as a six chord. I feel it that way until the G comes in and then it's like, oh, that's interesting. And so really it's like a one chord to four chord progression. That's the sound of it. Just back and forth a bunch. 
how that song goes. So that's the verse progression. Let's do a similar analysis on the next portion of the song. The next section of the song is the pre-chorus. I think of it as the pre-chorus. I go up to the two chord of the key. And the theme here is that these two strings are just ringing all the time. But this is E minor. So I'm thinking of it as the two chord of the key. And then five, A7. So E minor, A7, D. Okay, two, five, one. The melody here is and then it lands here. So two, five chord, one chord, and then this six chord slash actually G major seven chord uh, that we analyzed. So we just have these two chords preceding what we already an analyzed. Okay, well, what is this gonna be? Ah, the open strings just keep it the same. It's an E minor triad because G is in the chord and now it's doubled up here like this. And E is the root of the chord, so it's kind of nice. It keeps that floaty quality for through the progressions. Cool way to play E minor. One, five, three, three, and one up there also. Okay, A7 is just A7. Oh, cool. G is the flat seven of A7. E is in the chord. This is a typical, just most common open string version of A7. So those open strings stay throughout, but they don't really change those. That's the pre-chorus. And then there's something that happens going into the chorus, and I want to talk about that next. So now I have in the key of D, everything's in the key so far, even with these floaty strings. I'm going to go to this chord out of the key. Okay, so from here, I'll just kind of sing the melody so you hear it go there. And I land here for the chorus. Okay, so I just want to talk about what this is for a second. If we're in the key of D1 and you go down the scale, one, seven, six, five, four, three. Okay, the root here of this chord I go to is the three chord. The three chord in a major key is usually minor and I made it major. So this is the first chromatic chord. I have a video all about chromatic chords if you want to check that out. And this exact type of chromatic chord is talked about in that video. There's a link in the description. So I made the three chord of the key major. Okay, there's a lot of ways to think about this, but the most common way to think of the three chord in a key as major is that it is the secondary dominant. Don't worry about all these vocabulary words, but just exposing you to them if you haven't heard of them. It's a chord that is leading to the sixth chord of the key, kind of leading to a minor version of the key that we're in, the relative minor. So here's what it might sound like. A lot of songs do that, where I'm doing the one chord, and then the five chord of six, and then six, okay? But I'm going this chord and then going up, instead of resolving to the thing that it would typically resolve to, I'm going up to the four chord of the key. This is called a deceptive cadence in official classical music theory. You have this chord that's a secondary dominant, but then you go this way instead, okay? And that's very common in the song Creep by Radiohead. This is exactly what happens. This chord is in there and then it goes up a half step to the four chord, just like that in a different key though. Uh, so that's what's happening there. And I wanted to share that. Gets this drama happening a little bit and then landing on the chorus. Now let's talk about the chorus. Very simple and then we'll be done. So here's how the chorus goes. I'll sing the melody to it too. And I go out of the key again to this briefly. So it sounds like this. And back into this. So that's the melody, the structure, and everything like that. So, oh, what do we got here? We got a G major chord. One, five, one, three. And then open B. So we have B and B, because I'm using now this open B as our kind of drony thing. And then using an A chord, also one, five, one, three, but now the B stays in it, the open string B stays in it. So what does that make? A major with an open B string is just A major add nine, okay? The B is the second note from the A note in the scale, one, two, but as a chord extension, it's called nine. So G major, A major add nine, or just A add nine. And then, That little thing I did is just a finger picking kind of motion version of exactly what we talked about already with this chord. 
da, you could think of it this way. Da, 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 da. Just following the vocal melody a little bit when I do it this way. So that's it. Just that one little floaty note there is the, kind of the analysis of the chorus, and then it goes back to it, this and kind of comes together as a full song. And maybe I'll share more about songs I'm doing and you know, lessons around them if you find this interesting. For now, like I said, it's just a lot of what I'm working on. So I wanted to share a lesson uh, based off that. If you wanna have command over analyzing any chord types, understanding all of those names, knowing how to navigate the fretboard, have clarity of chord analysis all over the guitar, I actually have a workshop called the Fretboard Clarity Work Workshop, and it's all about chord theory analysis and chord construction with a methodology that I've been teaching for a long time. I don't often talk about that because it kind of uh, is behind the scenes. It's uh, f totally free, but usually I will send it to people when they sign up on my email list, which is what happens when you download any of my free PDFs and you can download my free chord chart called Chords with Color that has a bunch of these colorful chords, the add nine, the add 11, all of these things. It's a very cool chord chart that has chords through a bunch of keys so you can play the chords within a key and also see added notes that add color to them, these chord extensions. And when you download that, I'll send you my Fretboard Clarity Workshop that talks about uh, chord analysis also. So a lot of good stuff. That's all totally free if you want to check that out. There's a link for the chord chart in the top of the description, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash chords with color. I post a new lesson video every week. If you want to watch something uh, next right now, you can check out my top four finger picking patterns uh, lesson, which I talk about the pinch pattern if you're interested in finger picking and don't know that pattern. And next week, I'm going to talk about how to get a reggae feel on the guitar and a reggae and even a ska feel on the guitar, something I haven't talked about, but I used to play in punk rock bands that played like ska and reggae kind of vibe stuff a long time ago. So it'll be a fun lesson to get that reggae feel on the guitar. That'll be next week. Hope to see you there. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and happy practicing.